Hey guys, springtime is here, the weather is great. We have a huge backyard and we have a little bit of a garden going, but this year we really want to start doing like tomatoes and cucumbers and bell peppers and like a bunch of stuff. So one thing that I wanted to also put back there was a little bee house. They pretty much just look like little birdhouses, but you put like bamboo or like pretty much something to make a bunch of little holes in it so that solitary bees can make little homes in the little holes. Solitary bees are great for your garden. Most of the time they don't sting. I might need to do more research on that. But anyway, these are those like big like lumbering bees that you might have seen flying around. They're solitary so they don't have a hive. So what they usually do is they like burrow into holes in the ground or like if you have a wood pile in your backyard they might like burrow into that but making a nice little house for them gives them like a dedicated space that they hopefully find and populate anyway I wanted to make one of those today so I'm gonna show you how I do it so let's get started you'll need wood bamboo poles thin wooden dowel a hammer nails wood glue and hanging hardware I used a single piece of wood that was five and a half by 36 by 1 4th inch and I cut that down to a six by five and a half inch piece, a five and three fourths by five and a half inch piece, a five by four and three fourths inch piece, and two five by five inch pieces. And then I had a piece that was about nine inches that was left over. I'll probably paint on that or something. I don't know. Initially, I didn't glue these pieces together. I was trying to get away without using the glue, but I had to go back and glue it all up in the end. Mostly because I was using these short tack nails, which are technically only supposed to hold wood together while the glue dries. Anyway, along one of the 5x5 five five inch pieces, hammer three nails along the end that you want to be the bottom, but not all the way through, just enough to hold them in place, like so. Take the 5x4 and 3 fourths inch piece, and apply glue to one of the 5 inch edges. Line this up with the 5 by 5 inch that you just prepped and hammer the nails to attach these pieces together. Make sure you're hammering the pieces together correctly. At first I accidentally switched these two around so the edges were not the same. One was longer than the other but thankfully I noticed pretty quick and I was able to fix that mistake. Apply glue along these two edges and place the other 5 by 5 inch piece on. Nail these together. Set this aside. Take the six by five and a half inch piece and pre-hammer along one of the five and a half inch edges. On the five and three fourths by five and a half inch piece, apply glue to one of the five and a half inch edges and align these pieces together and hammer together. This next part would be easiest if you had a scrap piece of wood that you can put this on while you're hammering the roof on because there's a bit of an overhang of the roof. Take the body piece and apply glue to all of the top edges, the ones which are going to be touching the roof piece. Place the roof, keeping it flush with the back of the house, and hammer along the back edge and along the top of the roof where the sides are touching. Let it dry. Attach your hanging hardware. I just made one out of wire by looping it around on the ends and then bending the middle, and I nailed that in place on the back. The nails I used were kind of long for this, but I needed ones with a fat head to keep the wire in place, and these were the only ones I had. I figured once I put the bamboo in place, you wouldn't even be able to see the nails, and it wouldn't really affect how the bees are going to use it anyway, so yeah. Cut a bunch of 5 inch pieces of bamboo. To fill up this house, I ended up using a little less than 4.5 rods of 6 foot long bamboo. Once cut, place into the bee house. You want to fit them super snugly so that they won't just fall out. You'll probably have to rearrange them a couple times until they fit nicely. I've read that you shouldn't glue them in place because you want the option of being able to take the bamboo pieces out for whatever reason. 
Some people end up taking the bamboo out once a bamboo piece is filled up and capped off, and then they replace that bamboo piece with a new one so that more bees can move in. But my goal is for this to be more of a hands-off kind of bee house, so I'm not really planning on really removing and replacing these. So I guess technically I could have just glued my bamboo in place, but whatever. You'll notice that I used some thin pieces of round dowel that I had cut down to 5 inch pieces. I used those to help fill gaps in some spots where it was a little too wiggly and this just helped to make everything be a really tight fit. Once all the pieces are in place, it's just a matter of hanging it up in your yard. So I read that you should try to place these where the morning sun hits it because that helps to wake the bees up in the morning. Soon we'll have our garden up and running and hopefully some new tenants in this little bee house. Whenever that happens, I'll be sure to post all about it on Instagram or something. So if you want updates, be sure to follow me on there. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys build your own little bee houses or I guess you can modify this to just make it into a birdhouse. Just put like a front cover with a hole on it. But anyway, I hope you guys decide to build one for your backyard or your porch or whatever. I guess if you just have a porch, you might not want to do the bee house. But I mean, like I said, they aren't supposed to really be like aggressive or anything. So maybe they would be okay on a porch. I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, if you learned something, then please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all of that good stuff. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, there'll be links down below. If you're interested in any merch, like this hat, links to my Teespring will be down below as well. You can follow me on any of my social media, all of those will be down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping me produce this video. If you like my videos and have learned something from them, please consider supporting me on Patreon to help me continue to make them. It's totally optional, I'll still be making videos either way, it just helps me be able to put out better stuff. A link will be down below, or you can just click up here in the corner.